Oh, hey, I'm not ready yet. I'm still sanding. Time to get back to work on the Lock Patriot. As you can see, I finished sanding the spirals on the body tubes, and I'm really happy about that. What I did was I used my sanding block to knock down most of the uh, filler, and then I came back with hand with my 180 grit to smooth out the body tube as much as I could. Then I used some 400 grit to help reduce the amount of scratches that I see. So the last thing to do is just uh, take any excess filler that's inside the uh, slots for the fins and use my knife and just kind of get those all cleaned out. So I'll take care of that and then we'll get on with the build. Before I glue in the motor mount and install the fins, I want to make sure that the fins all fit in the uh, tube slots just fine. And having a look at them, I can tell that the, the tube slots are still a little bit on the tight side. So what I like to use to uh, open them up a little bit is this uh, Great Plains hand sander. Just with some 180 grit right here, this sander easily fits in the tube slots. And I just work a little bit on each side and it doesn't take very long and the fin will fit in just fine. Obviously you don't want to open up the slot too much, but just a little bit you'll find will help the fin fit in a little bit better. So I'll just work on this a little bit more until the fins slide easily into their slots. Okay, let's have a look how, see how the fin fits. And that slides right into place, perfect. So the fins have been sanded and beveled, the body tube spirals filled in, and the slots for the fins have been opened up a little bit. You could say that we've eaten our vegetables and now it's time to get on with the fun part of the building. Just a quick word first though, I found that the tube spirals on the lock body tube had very small indentations and that the mid-wax wood filler was pretty easy to sand. So it's not a whole lot of extra effort to make the body tube look real nice and as a result, with the cardboard rocket, it's going to be lighter than a fiberglass rocket. Before gluing in the motor mount and the fins, it's important to make sure all the parts fit, so that's what I've done here. The motor mount is in place and the fins are all in their slots and everything looks really good, so we can go ahead with uh, gluing in the motor mount and fins. I've gone ahead and gone to PaloBay.com, created a fin guide, that will come in handy. And before I do that, I'm going to pull the fins out and I'm going to create a line going up the length of the body tube and I'm going to center that between two fins and I'll show you how to make that. Finding the center point between two fin slots is pretty straightforward. A couple different ways to do it. First way is just take a ruler and try and roll it between the fin slots and figure out mathematically uh, where the middle is between your two measurements. One easy way to do it that I like to do is take a piece of paper, put it over the fin slots, mark Mark where the fin slot is here, one on each side. You can fold the paper in half, like so. Put the paper back down. Realign the marks with your fin slots. And right where you folded it is the midway point between the two fin slots. With the midpoint marked between the two fin slots, you just take some uh, angle aluminum here. Make sure it's sitting fairly straight. and run the line all the way up and down the body tube. Now in a rocket this size you can do this with when the fins are installed but it's just a lot easier to take care of it now. To help me with spreading epoxy for the upper centering ring what I did was I took the motor mount assembly and lined it up with the fin slots so I could see about where the top centering ring would end up inside the body tube. So I made a, a mark just shy of that and then using that mark I took a dowel measured the length up to that mark from inside the body tube and then I made a mark on the dowel so that I know when I'm spreading epoxy inside the body tube that if I go up to the mark and no further then the bead of glue won't be past where the upper centering ring goes. I also found it necessary to sand the two centering rings here to allow them to slide into the body tube but now that I've done that they slide in pretty well. So I've got my epoxy mixed. Once again, for this build, I'm using Rocket Epoxy, which I think is a great glue. And uh, it's time to glue in the motor mount, so let's get to work. Just like doing tube spirals, I find that gluing in the motor mount, or at least getting the bead of glue up in the body tube, is kind of a tedious process. Okay, I have the ring of epoxy in for the upper centering ring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the motor mount partway into the body tube, and then I'm going to put some more epoxy 
uh, between the fin slots for the second centering ring. Okay, that's all the epoxy into the body tube for now, so I'm going to take the motor mount, place it into the body tube, and push it into position. Now the nice part about using an eye bolt for recovery instead of gluing the shock cord straight to, this, uh, to the uh, motor mount is that the alignment of the motor mount going into the body tube doesn't really matter because there's nothing to get in the way of the fins. Now with the way that these centering rings fit pretty tight inside the body tube, I highly recommend using epoxy and not wood glue for installing the motor mount. Wood glue has a way of, of catching uh, when you're putting in two close fitting parts and once it catches it's very 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 difficult to undo. With epoxy you have plenty of working time. So what I'm doing now is sighting down the motor mount making sure that there's no extra epoxy where the fins are going to go and that looks really good right now. So what I'm going to do is place a fin inside one of the slots and I'm going to pull the motor mount backwards until that fin is touching the middle centering ring and I'll just check all four slots to make sure that the fins are going to be seating nicely there we go perfect now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the body tube place it upside down and I'm going to drop some CA glue between the motor mount and the, uh, the centering ring where the, uh, where the centering ring makes, meets the body tube and that will lock the whole assembly into place. So there you go. Just a few drops of CA glue right between that middle centering ring and the body tube. I'm going to use some CA kicker. That's going to help lock this in place for now. Just tack the motor mount in position so that when I place the body tube vertically to allow the epoxy to dry the motor, the motor tube won't slide down. Before I set the body tube upright for the night and let the epoxy cure, I'm going to add some epoxy to the top centering ring to create a nice fillet between the centering ring and the body tube. Most of the thrust from the motor gets transferred from the motor mount to the body tube through the fins. However, all of the recovery loads are on that top centering ring, so it's really important to have a nice uh, glue joint between the centering ring and the body tube. Okay, I've got a nice bead of epoxy going around the upper centering ring. I'm going to check the motor mount tube one more time, back where the fins go, just to make sure there's no extra epoxy sitting on that tube that might interfere with the fins fit. Once I check that, and I'm happy with the way everything's looking, I'm going to set the body tube upright and let the epoxy cure overnight. Okay, the motor mount's had all night to uh, let the epoxy set up, so it's time to put all the fins on. I've mixed up 20 grams of epoxy for the fins and that's all that I'm going to use. Because I have access to the uh, back side of the motor mount here, I'll be able to do internal fillets after the fins are all mounted in place. So what I'm doing now is just uh, spreading a small amount of epoxy on the, the forward edge and the root edge of the fins. And this is a case where less is more. I don't want too much epoxy getting between the materials because I want the fins to sit down nice and flush on the motor mount. I also want to make sure I don't have too much spread out behind the fin because that will interfere with putting on the, the rear centering ring later. Okay, all the fins are on the body tube, now I'm going to take the fin guide, slide it back over the fins to help lock them into place, and then I'm going to use some uh, masking tape as well to make sure all the fins sit down nice and snug while the epoxy cures. Okay, the fins are all in place, the fin guide is in place, and I've used tape to make sure that the fins are sitting snug. 
both against the motor mount tube on the inside as well as the uh, middle centering ring here at the front end edge of the fins. One last thing to do is I just check the back end, make sure there's no epoxy pooling up where the aft centering ring is going to go, and then I'll just set this aside and allow the epoxy to cure. Okay, the epoxy's had a chance to dry on the fins, and now I'm getting ready, them ready for the uh, external and internal fillets. Nice thing about doing a four-finned rocket instead of a three-finned rocket is that you can do three sets of uh, fillets at once. I'm going to do the uh, inside fillets here uh, between the fins and the body tube. Then I'm going to do the internal fillets here between the fins and the motor mount. And then on the top, I'm going to do the external fillets between the fins and the body tube. So one thing I did uh, to prepare for this, a few pieces of tape there on the motor mount as well as the uh, body tube there just to help prevent any epoxy from setting up where I'm going to put the rear centering ring in. Additionally, as you can see, I've put the normal uh, tape on for the external fillets. But what I did for the, uh, for the bottom side, since I haven't done the external fillets yet, is I've added a couple pieces of tape, one here, one on the other fin, and that'll prevent any epoxy from seeping through the joint that's uh, between the fin and the, the motor mount, or the, uh, the body tube. So that'll, that'll prevent any epoxy from dribbling out if I'm not watching it. Make sure that I can still do nice clean fillets on the outside of those fins. Alright, so I know the lighting isn't really the best uh, setup for this shot right now, but I just want to show you what I'm going to be doing here in a minute. I'm mixing the epoxy up right now, letting it heat up so it'll flow nicely in my cold garage. I'm going to start with the internal fillets, starting with the, uh, the bottom two, then come to the uh, top two internal fillets. And to spread them out, I'm just going to pour some of the epoxy in and then use this long dowel to help spread the uh, fillets up and down the length of the fin. Uh, the reason that I do the inter internal fillets first is because I can move the rocket around and uh, joss a little bit because the, the appearance of the fillets on the inside doesn't really that matter that much. It's just important to get a little extra glue to help with the joint. Once those are in place, then I leave the rocket in position to work on the external fillets because those are the ones that people are going to see and you want to make sure that they're pretty. Okay, just working on the, the last internal fillet here. I already did the other three. Just uh, spreading the, the epoxy out with my dowel here. There we go. You just get an idea of how that looks, how that works. And of course it's extremely important when you're working with the epoxy inside the the body tube there that you don't get any epoxy inside the motor mount and also make sure that there's no epoxy starting to set up where you're going to slide the centering ring in later. Okay, now that the uh, internal fillets are setting up, I don't want to disturb the rocket, so now this is the time to work on the external fillets on the fins here. I've got the tape set up and I've got my epoxy here and I've got a, a large diameter popsicle stick that I'm going to use to make the final fillet radius. So I'm simply going to start by uh, spreading out the epoxy. We get nice even coverage and then we'll start work on shaping it. Okay, I've got the epoxy spread on the external fillet areas here, and uh, the thing is uh, about the external fillets is that it takes less epoxy than you would think to actually do. Now, uh, when I started spreading the epoxy, I thought I was going to run out, but I was able to spread it out thinly enough throughout the whole area here, and with my large popsicle stick, I'll be able to start creating a radius, and there will be uh, plenty of excess epoxy that I can smear back on if I need to add a little bit more. So as you can see, when I started shaping the fillets here, I was uh, getting some, some pockets where there wasn't enough epoxy coverage. But as I've gone over it several times here, I've been able to pick up some extra epoxy and spread it back out. With the fillets mostly smoothed out, I just need to work on this forward area here. Make sure that that's nice and smooth. 
And just like with my Drago build, remember, if there's a little bit of extra epoxy, it's not the end of the world. You can sand it down. Rock epoxy is a little bit difficult to sand, but it can still be done. Another nice thing about rock epoxy is that you have lots of time to work with it before it sets up. I've used Bob Smith epoxy on uh, smaller projects, and I feel that the rock epoxy is stronger, and it gives you a lot more time to work with. Uh, Bob Smith 30 minute epoxy really well set up when, in 30 minutes, but in a cool garage like this, rock epoxy takes hours to set up. Okay, there we go. The epoxy uh, fillets are set in place. Now what I'm gonna do is just remove this tape here. And this will hopefully uh, reduce the, uh, the size of the ridge that will be created by the epoxy. I want to do this before the epoxy has a chance to set up. Chances are there will be a small ridge and what I typically do is I'll, I'll try and sand it out. You can also add a little bit of filler when sanding it in and then uh, during the primer stage adding some primer and sanding that down will get the rest of that ridge down. Now I'm not going to bore you with the next three sets of fillets that I have to do on this rocket. There's a lot of waiting around between the, the sets as well. But what I will show you is uh, how I'm going to finish this rocket off by uh, drilling the, the holes for the rail buttons. So that's coming up next. I've given some time for the epoxy to cure on the first set of fillets, so I'm free to move the body tube around right now. I'm very happy with how the fillets turned out, and I'm not going to bore you with the next three sets of fillets, but I will say it, it's, uh, it's important when you're doing all of your fillets to try and make them the same consistent radius all around so the rocket looks a lot better. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to install the aft centering ring, and I'm not going to bore you with that detail either, but what I do want to show you is, uh, on this last little bit for setting up the booster tube, is uh, how I uh, find the dimension for drilling the upper centering ring for the uh, for the rail button. So I'm going to show you that now. As I mentioned in the unboxing video, the Lock Patriot comes with rail buttons already. And these are set up for 1010 rail, which is uh, perfect for this size of rocket. The rail buttons also come with machine screws as well as wood self-tapping screws. And I'm going to use the wood self-tapping screws to go straight into the centering ring. Now to get my uh, dimension for how far down the body tube I need to drill, all I do is I just take this dowel and I'm going to stick it into the body tube until it's touching the top of the centering ring and I'll just double check to make sure that it's not hitting any hardware and I'll make a mark at the top of the body tube. Now all I need to do is just hold the dowel on the outside, go to the same depth and that's the top of my centering ring. I have a quarter inch thick centering ring, so I'm going to mark the bottom of the centering ring and right in the middle, and that's where I'm going to start my drill. Now I have a 5 64 uh, drill bit here for a pilot hole, and I've used some tape here to set the depth for how deep I want the hole to go. So I'm going to hold the rocket as straight as I can. There you go. And as you can see from how the drill bit went in, I hit the centering ring perfectly. Now all I need to do is upsize the hole to the proper size for the screw, and that's it. After threading the hole for the rail button, Locke recommends installing the rail button with epoxy. Uh, however, in my opinion, it's not really that necessary. This uh, screw isn't subject to very much vibration during flight. So all I'm going to do is just add some uh, medium CA. You can use thin or medium down the hole there. And I'll just let that cure out, and then I'll retap the hole again, and that'll be plenty strong enough for the rail button. And I'll do the same thing to the aft centering ring and aft rail button once that's installed. Last thing to do on the booster tube is to drill a pressure relief hole. And I'll just do that anywhere between where the upper centering ring and where the bottom of the shoulder of the uh, upper section goes. So right about here will be just fine. There we go. And I'll wipe that clean. So this completes booster assembly for the Lock Patriot. 
Later on, I'll install the aft centering ring, the aft rail button, and after painting, I'll install the motor retainer as well. So far, I've been very pleased with how all the parts have gone together, and I love that this rocket is a decent size. It's a five and a half inch diameter, yet the parts are really not that big overall, so it's very easy to work with. All I need to do now is just finish up the fillet work, which will take some time. Next time, I'm going to show you how to turn the coupler into an avionics bay.